Hello everyone and welcome to episode 125 of the WMA5 series here on the channel. It's Pride FC in the year 2009 as we have Brazilian Bushido 9, Sergey versus Big Nog 3. I cannot fucking wait for this show. What a main event that shall be as uh, we have uh, 19 pieces of mail to talk about. So Faircloth wants to fight Lee Murray. Uh, we'll probably have to wait for that one because Lee Murray is going to be on the London Bushido card which is in August. So... Probably won't happen. Uh, we'll see, though. Uh, yeah, I guess that really depends on Lee Murray's, um, as far as it, if he has a good fight or not, as far as, like, being able to not take a lot of damage or whatnot. But it's just kind of sad when you think about that now, as far as being 125 episodes in, and now we're finally getting to the point where it's like, wow, we actually might not only see some of the things we're going to see coming up in the mail. I didn't even think about that. Uh, I probably would have deleted it, but we'll keep that around. Mike Russell's going to take a hiatus after his last loss, so that will mean he's probably going to be gone for the uh, rest of the series. That's unfortunate. Yoko Takahashi's got extended, so did Marlos going in. Also, Sean Pearson, uh, Mike Russell leaving Minnesota Martial Arts Academy after probably taking his hiatus. Jack Congo's joined alive. We got Misha Tate from Smack Girl. She did lose in her uh, last fight, so she's not undefeated anymore. I didn't mean to hit that. Uh, she lost to uh, uh, Rossi Sexton, who, who's a pretty savage competitor in her own right, Rossi Sexton. And she got the win, too, in a minute uh, with a Kamara, which I believe she, you'll see her. Yeah, yeah we signed uh, Sarah Sh uh, Schneider. We signed Goko uh, Takabayashi, who is, I think, 8-3, and three, but she's the ninth straw weight in the world. She's on a two-fight winning streak. We'll see how she does. I mean, this women's division... Really coming together, and uh, Rosie Sexton, you know, obviously beating uh, Misha Tate as a huge win for her. We extended, uh, I forgot to delete uh, the Melvin Manhoff extension and the Jim Miller extensions, the double uh, note, but uh, we extended Valentin Overeem, extended Jim Miller, Melvin Manhoff. Uh, we signed uh, Alexis Davis as well. Forrest Griffin uh, wants to fight Leona Machida next. We'll definitely want to do that fight. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then we signed uh, Douglas Lima as well, who is. Uh, 4-0 right now. He's done pretty well for himself. He's not even beaten, like, uh, as far as he beat Matt Riddle on his debut. Beating a couple of people. And, uh, we'll see how he does here as far as, uh, we might keep him in pride. We might keep him, we might send him down the rings. But who knows? I mean, the welterweight division could kind of use some fresh blood in there. It's kind of the, uh, the thought process there. But, uh, we'll keep the Forrest Griffin note. And also maybe the wrong Faircloth note, just in case that does happen. As the Brazilian Bushido 9 card. Sergei Kretnerov. Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. Big Nog himself. Only the 5 pound difference. The trilogy fight in the main event in Brazil. This should be a banger. As Leopoldo Cerro. Taking on Amor Soli off at the co-main. Jose Aldo. Wanda Baraga on this card as well. Karina Dam and Chris Cyborg. Galavante versus Cristiano Marciello. And then... Bigfoot Silva taking on Rafael Carino. It's crazy Rafael Carino's giving up like 20 pounds on someone. Did not think that was going to happen. And uh, Little Nox taking on Hodger Gracie. And another Gracie there. And uh, Halleck taking on Allen Goes. So we got a couple of Gracies. We got a couple of Nogueras on the uh, on the card. It's a fun time in the Brazilian Bushido card. As of course, these two. The trilogy. Our main event. Two of the best pound for pound fighters in the world, two of the best heavyweights in the world, the 15th time Big Nog's main event in a Pride event, the 6th time for Sergey. they fought last year at Bushido in Osaka 7, uh, which Nogueira won by submission, I want to say the first time they fought, was that at a, I was thinking, as far as, uh, yeah, it was Pride Kamikaze 35, which was, uh, it says, so they fought a fought They've had a fight, rather, Jesus. They've had a fight every year uh, from 07 to 08 and now to 09. And uh, the split decision, you know, back at, uh, you know, that was as far as uh, Sergey's first time in the in the three five-rounders, as well as the, the third-round fight, rather, not the uh, three five-rounders. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's coming off a win of, of Pete Williams as far as uh, for, I mean, that hell of a run, legendary run he had beating Barnett. Fedor, Hizzo, Rod uh, Rico Rodriguez, Overeem, Barnett, and then Big Nog to then beat Overeem again. I mean, just crazy. Crazy run he had. 
Uh, it's kind of crazy. He only finished as far as uh, he had two knockouts in their overeem and, and uh, Barnett. The rest were decisions. Did knock out Pete Williams though, so he, he's still you know he's if he's gonna finish the fight, it, it can come in the first round for sure to watch out for. Especially Big Nog. Big Nog's not afraid to stand up with him and bang with him, and especially probably you know being the hometown hero and, and Big Nog looking to get a big win. Of course, the winner of this fight's taken on. As far as uh, they're taking on Crow Cop either in August or September, or we wait till uh, Shockwave, but we'll probably have that fight uh, as soon as we can. As far as for Big Nog, you know, he's coming in off of a loss to, to Crow Cop, looking to get a, a rematch with him as far as uh, if he beats Sergey here. Uh, either way, this should be a very fun fight. Can't wait to see how it plays out. Leopoldo Cerro taking on the Marcelli off a man who has just been on a fucking tear. And Leopoldo Cerro and someone that I would love to see take on a top five guy. He's gotten leg lock wins. He choked out Rich Franklin. He's just been on a tear of all tears. It's crazy to think he lost to guys like Andre Simonoff and Rodrigo Rodriguez. I'd love to see maybe that fight now just to kind of see what would happen between that, because even though, like, a Murillo fight would be pretty full, uh, pretty cool to see, you know, that'd be nine years in the making. Uh, maybe even if we wait uh, for, uh, as far as a Shockwave show, that'd be kind of cool to see. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited to, to see how Leopoldo Serra could do to end out the series. It's the seventh lightweight in the world, light heavyweight in the world, rather, excuse me, uh, the eighth middleweight in Prize Crazies, the 25... Uh, middleweight in the world as well, but Amar Soleoff, a guy who we have not seen in a while, he uh, had his hiatus after getting called up from rings, lost to Forrest in August, got knocked out in the second, we'll see what happens here, I don't, I think he's getting fed to the Lions, for, if we're being, if we're being honest, he's getting fed to uh, Leopoldo Serra, Soleoff trains at Presta, and uh, Serra does have an overall record of 0-0-1, Against the Peresta team. Betting line's going to have him as a big favorite, which is no surprise. It's Jose Aldo taking on Wander the Crusher Braga. It's Braga, the ninth ranked lightweight in Pride FC. It's crazy Aldo still not even in the top 15 when he has beaten some tough guys. As uh, they both have won their last five fights. Braga's won by submission. Aldo's won by decision. It's, of course, 8 0. He beat Takano Rigomi. He's beaten Mitsuhiro Ishida. He's beaten Daisuke Nakamura and Ryan Bowe. And I uh, had the Dennis Silver and uh, Spencer Fisher fights to start off his career. He's someone that obviously, 22 years old, super fucking young. But to take on someone that's a top 10 guy in, in Wanda Baraga, it, that's a huge fight for him. Wanda Baraga he just beat uh, Mac Danzig, uh, which was a hell of a fight too. That was a really, 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 really good fight last year. Uh, as far as his last three wins have been by rear naked choke, so it's something to uh, watch out for if you are... Aldo, but that, that should be a fun fight, though. Can't wait to see that. Karina Dam and Chris Cyborg. Cyborg's finished four of the last five opponents. They're both are uh, top five, uh, or no, actually, Cyborg's uh, 12th. I thought they were both in the top as far as featherweights go. Uh, it's, it's crazy Karina Dam is higher than Cyborg, because uh, Cyborg, I'd say, is the favorite. That's crazy that uh, the Blurcast Set Picks think she's the favorite, and because uh, she's going to have a significant weight advantage. Uh, Karina Dam is 11 and 2. But I just feel like she's lost to Tara La Rosa twice, and I feel like Cyborg can beat Tara La Rosa. I guess we'll have to, you know, wait and see. Uh, she did lose to Vanessa Porto, which is not even a tough loss. Vanessa Porto is a savage, obviously, you know, the women's champion. But uh, she's been had a, a hell of a run as far as exciting fights throughout her time uh, in the either uh, the Elite XC, the Octagon, or the ring here in uh, Pride FC. But that should be a fun fight, though. I, I can't wait to see how that one plays out as... Jay-Z Calavante taking on Cristiano Marciello. was Calavante won three of his last five fights by decision. Cristiano Marciello, surprisingly, is the big favorite to win this one. They know he has the reach advantage, the five-inch reach advantage, which should play into a factor, but he's someone that really hasn't found his footing. Uh, the Joe Hurley one was pretty big, but even then, he hasn't had, like, these crazy amount of, like, good fights. They've been either decent, average, or very poor, which, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens as far as for him. Because uh, Calavante is a pretty exciting guy to, to go in there up against. He's uh, he's lost to Charles Benn and, and B.J. Penn, which, you know, obviously the B.J. Penn lost. I mean, he just had a tough break having to draw Penn in the uh, lightweight Grand Prix. Uh, he's beaten Eddie Alvarez, Leonardo Santos, Alberto Crane, Scott Hine, Chinyoki. So he hasn't really fought anybody 
that's super crazy as far as winning wise besides BJ Penn. Uh, you know, he's has he's only fought one guy inside the top fifteen. Uh, Marciello, I think, is yeah, he's in the uh, he's he's eleventh. So he, first time taking on a top fifteen guy since BJ Penn. He's got a lot of lot to prove. Scalavante there, and then Bigfoot Silva taking on Rafael Earthquake Carino as a. Uh, yeah, I mean, you saw Silva has the significant weight advantage, plus has a 5 inch reach advantage. It's crazy that he is a giant man in there against a giant man like Rafael Carino. Obviously, Bigfoot Silva, we're waiting for the dominant run as uh, it's 2-1. and He lost to Alexander Milenko, which is a tough fight to have, to be honest, to debut against. Uh, but uh, we'll see what he does here against Earthquake, Rafael Carino. Carino, you know, he's had seven fights. He's fought some tough guys. You know, beat Frank Mayer, beat uh, Ben Rothwell, which is huge. Which was, that, that was a really good fight, too. That was the Rothwell fight. I'd like to see that again. Uh, maybe in the future. He's beaten Mike Russell in the past. Uh, beat Kevin Randleman in his last fight. Uh, just crazy to think how long he's kind of been uh, as far as waiting uh, for this moment, as far as to have a big time fight like this. Uh, you know, as far as this is. Uh, this is a great fight. You know, I'm really, really excited to see how this goes because this could go either way, for being honest here, but between these two guys. And uh, now we have, for our prelims, Little Nog taking on Hodger Gracie. Hodger Gracie with a six-inch reach advantage. Obviously, the Gracies have not done well in this series, but I think if there was someone to do well, it would be Hodger, which is crazy because, obviously, we're at the tail end now of the series. But uh, Hoist... Sucked ass. Henzo. Sucked ass. Uh, yeah, just, they did not do well. Did not do well, not one bit. Uh, but maybe this can all change here, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> I guess, uh, we're getting going here, uh, for Halleck Gracie and Alan Goes. So, uh, Halleck, 4-0. Uh, yeah, as far as he is, uh, definitely the, the, uh, underdog in this one. Because Alan Goes, he's beating some tough guys. Veteran in Pride FC. Even though he's got a losing record. And he's lost the past, uh, three straight fights. He's lost for us last five. Not great, but you see the wins though. He's beaten Rampage twice. He's beaten Guy Metzger in the past. Uh, Ebenezer Fontes Baraga. Uh, Kusha, uh, Kusha uh, Manoa. And he's beaten Stefan Bonner too as well. And ha and uh, Rodrigo Hoos. It's interesting. He, he's beaten some as far as interesting guys. And uh, I can't wait to see how this one goes. Because this could honestly be over in an instance. We'll, we'll see. As uh, Herb Dean's a referee... Ringside judges, crowd buzzing for this one. Two local fighters. So here we go. Then he's uh, goes ignores the offer to touch gloves. Goes comes in with a takedown. He's got it. Look at the pass guard. Yeah, but he keeps it secure. Trying to sweep. That's not happening. Keeps him guessing now. Trying to pass again, and it's a scramble. Gracie's left turn it up. This goes gets behind him. Quickly back gets back to his feet. So now goes has back control. Looking to drag him right back down, which he does. Yeah, not looking great. Is a uh, of Gracie. As uh, he's pounding, gets pounded away now. As uh, he brings his legs into a trap and goes into half guard. As Gracie's trying to transition, that's not happening. Blocks attempted sweep here. Goes trying to get the side control. Another scramble. Goes comes out on top. Keeps him guessing. Another attempted sweep. Looking to catch his breath now. Is uh, as Ghost blocks attempt there. The hard bean let him really rustle around for a while. Nine minutes or so. Well, no, probably not about nine minutes. About Four minutes, four or five minutes, I'd say. This goes, uh, shoots in, and he gets another takedown. So, Alec Gracie, he's got to work on his takedown defense so far is what I'm seeing. Because if Alan Goes is just repeatedly taking it down one after another, not a great sign. But, uh, yeah, Alan Goes definitely the favorite for sure. He's, he's living up to that. By a pretty dominating performance, though, pretty boring performance, though, as we'll see what happens here in a second. Gracie looking for a trip. That uh, gets blocked. Now he's trying to suck him down. And the guard, he does so. He blocks him as he uh, Gracie strikes away here. Goes can't really do anything about it though. As uh, now Goes loses his guard while defending the strike, so Gracie's left on top of him. Gracie looks to get on top. He does so. As he blocks it, him to sweep, pounds away with rights, tries to go for a double under, pulling him in. As now Goes is taking some big hands, but it uh, doesn't land anything significant. And now Gracie gets pushed away again. Gracie looking to get into side control, but he can't do it. So goes goes for the scramble. And Gracie's left hurdled up. Some several big shots now from Alan Goes. Look at the take. 
uh, back control again it's to stand up and so ghost Bot's just gonna bring him right back down and he's got his back now rear naked choke not getting it needed to to get the hooks in there obviously with only 16 seconds he had to pull something out of your ass really as uh, now the third and final round goes looking for that takedown yeah i mean he's got this fight pretty much in the bag as uh, gracie trying to transition the guard that's not happening as uh, goes now trying to catch his breath not happening though yeah, uh, stalemate period. They're going to stand it back up. Gracie's getting a corner response now. Goes is starting to slow down a little bit as Gracie can't connect with sub strikes. But there's a right cross that lands hard. Uh, but the Halix now will get a little tired. That would have been a nice shot to land earlier on in the fight. Big takedown from Goes as uh, he will probably remain. Oh no, he's going to try to pass. Okay, yeah, he got side control to end up the fight. But yeah, dominant performance from Allen Goes. The Gracie curse continues, as uh, he was the underdog, I will say that. But, uh, yeah, Allen goes. Hangs around, 13-10-3, as uh, Halle Gracie gets his first loss. As he wants to fight Guy Metzger again. And he thinks it'd be a particularly good contest for Allen goes. It's a little nog, Hodge or Gracie. As uh, plus 160, minus 210 for Hodge being the favorite. Both Brazilians again, 6-2, 6-4, both middleweights. Again, Herb Dean's a referee staying out there. It's, uh, both hometown fighters trying to fight it out here to see who's the better man. It's uh, There might be still an undefeated Gracie to end out this night, though. We'll see. So Gareth throws a hook to the body. Uh, he throws it again, but each time Hodger steps back, there's a nice jab at a right hand to the body. There's a left jab and a straight right. There's a cut now. Look at a little knock go as they can't have to step left jab, but it's the right hook to the body. As, I mean, obviously, the striking advantage would go to Little Nog for sure, but if uh, Hodger's able to get a hold of him, it's, uh, it might be bad news for Little Nog here. But so far, he's been lighting him up. Can't hit the step left jab, but there's a right to the ribs, and there, there's the takedown attempt. He stops it. Does Little Nog, which still gets driven up against the ropes. Now some dirty boxing now, looking for the trip. He's got it. It's a slick trick, too. A slick, a slick trick. Oh, my God, I did it again. A slick trip, rather. My God, is. Uh, Hodger tries to get an arm triangle, but Lil Nog stops it. A couple of punches now. Some small strikes now. Looking to get him out. Not happening, though. A few right hands. Looking to get for it again, but another. this time it's a scramble after stopping him. It has no garrows on his back, so we're about right where we started. Some elbows now. Some weak right hands. Trying to pass guard. Not really happening, though. So, yeah, I mean, Lil Nog, I think he did a lot. Uh, but, you know, once he got the takedown, you were in Hodger's world. For sure, it could have went either way, though, depending, because he did have the cut. Uh, I think it's a little closer than what probably the metrics would think it would be. I I would honestly give that the little knock, personally. We'll see, though, as uh, the cut man's trying to stop him. Fight begins, round two. Hodger shoots in, stops it, does nog. Trying to push him against the ropes, now looking for the trip. Basically the same thing here, another slick trip. Trying to get the mount. Not happening, though, again. Trying to get the mount. And he rolls up, gives up his back instead. Prevents the hooks from being hooked in. Still can't get the hooks in. Still blocking it. His little knock. He's fighting his fucking ass off. And there's a scramble. Little knock fighting his ass off. But he's, he lost that round for sure. Not a lot happening. Just little knock having to, to fight for his life there. See what happens in the third is he can't connect the step strikes. Scores to the right to the body. As a, a jab at some from Little Nog and another right hook to the body. Looking for the takedown, can't get it. Maybe push him against the ropes. Hitting each other with a short bunch of the body to the side of the head. Gracie with the slick trip again. And uh, yeah, I think that basically seals this one. Gracie looking for mount. Scramble though. As Nogueira's on his back though. He loses out in the scramble. Passes. Another scramble. Gracie ends up pushing down on Nogueira. He's facing him up in a turtle position. Looking for a soccer kick, but he's up too quick. Little Nog stopping the takedown again, but yeah, just Hodger, just resilient, absolutely resilient, and he kept on putting the pressure on him. Little Nog's gonna be six and five, three and zero oh for Hodger. I, you know, he had the stand-up advantage. He just could not stop his uh, trips once he got him up against the ropes because he was stopping the, the single leg and the double leg, but he could not stop the trip. As uh, he thanks his team at SBG Ireland, his favorite sponsors, all the fans came out supporting him. It says he'd be. Uh, he'll fight whoever they put in front of him. They think James Uno be a particularly good contest. As our first main fight card here, as uh, on the card, as a uh, big nog, or as big nog, as Bigfoot, 
Uh, Antonio Silva taking on Earthquake, Rafael Carino, 11 and 4, 4 and 2. Pretty close, though. Could go either way. I think it was going to be a hell of a fight, though. Got some giant heavyweights in there. As Mario Yamasaki is the perfect ref for this one. Someone might die. As uh, the crowd buzzing for this one. So, again, two Brazilians battling it out. Touch of gloves here. Silva throws a punch, but Carino avoids it. Carino shoots in for the takedown. Silva sprawls, though, brilliantly does. And now he steps in and grabs his opponent. Big knee strike to the body. Now look at the muscle against the ropes. He does so. Looking to go down low and grab both legs. He does so. He's got side control, too. As uh, Carino keeps him guessing now. As uh, Carino now taking some, some shots. They're not heavy blows, but they're still some just shots to land shots at this point. Keeps him there with some punches. Yamasaki's going to stand him up. Exchange of strikes doesn't really land anything big. Another sprawl from Silva. Pushing down his hands and knees. And now some several clean shots in the land on Carino. And now... Standing up, Carino gets into a better position, but he's still held into a clinch. He's trying to rustle him back against the ropes. He can't do it, though. It's now Carino looking for the takedown, and he does so. Wow. As uh, Rafael Carino looking to get something going, though, but Silva tries to get the double under, but he can't do it, though, as he's passing to side control, but it's a scramble again. Silva leaves his leg in as they scramble, so Carino immediately tries to grab it and ends up losing out in the scramble. That was a bit too risky to do. Uh, but there's still some time, so he might, might, that might not have cost him the round, but it, it definitely does suck for him. Because I think Silva's going to stay on top of him the whole way. Has to lean back to forward a couple of wild swings up on the bottom to end out the round. Yeah, I mean, Silva, I think he did enough for sure. He landed more strikes. Um, he had the takedown. I think he controlled a lot of the round. He did some damage as well. Uh, but, you know, Carino could have had a, good, a really good shot of winning that round, though, if he was able to not have uh, went for the leg during the scramble because it would have been a little closer. We'll see, though, in the second. As Avagarino looks for the takedown again, that gets stopped. He gets him up against the ropes, though. But Silva wraps him around, so now he's in control. Looking for the takedown, and he's got it. As uh, Silva is looking to kind of walk away with this one if he's able to control him this entire time here in the second. Uh, there's a scramble. Now, with about three minutes left as uh, Silva catches him too slow as... Rafael Carino, that big six foot eight frame, just a little too too slow. As there's a knee strike to the ribs, fires with punches, trying to move the guard, but it's not happening. Some right hands again. Minute left, looking for Kamora. That would have been cool, but uh, Carino blocks it. And uh, yeah, Bigfoot Silva, he just can't get caught this rate. See what happens as Silva steps in, looking to unleash. Silva looking for the strike. There's a one two, can't land either blow, though. Silva's a little tired, though, and Carino's starting to breathe a little deeper, but. Still trying for a takedown, but Silva is able to stop him again as he's pushing him down up against the ropes here and looking for a single leg. He's got it. Chips him down, and he's got his back. Holy shit. Rafael Carino, is he going to get him with this rear naked choke? He's going to have to get the hooks in. And Silva blocks it. Oh, you can't stand him up. Oh, but Carino gets the takedown. Oh, looking for a leg lock. Oh, my God. That would have been crazy. What a round for Rafael Carino, though. I don't think it's going to be enough, but that was huge. Wow. All three giving it to Rafael Carino. That's crazy. Wow. Hard to believe the guy in the left loss. That's insane. I mean, that was a hell of a third round, but I just don't think he did enough. If you look at the entire fight, that's crazy. Big foot Silva getting robbed in Brazil. I mean, the notorious in this judge or in this <laughs> series rather the judges here in brazil tend to uh there'll be some robberies happening on these cards and uh that, that was one of them for sure that was crazy i mean unanimous decision not even a split as uh rafael carino thanks everyone connected to uh, no as uh for prepared for the fight as uh it's sponsored supporting financially as well. He's showing, uh, showing respect as Rafael Carino praising Silva for the skill and toughness as uh, Jay-Z Calavante taking on Cristiano Marciello as uh, Calavante. And uh, he's um, plus 320. Underdog here. Got the Luta Libre style. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu style. Both from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Uh, you know, same weight as far as the weigh-in. Uh, but uh, Cristiano Marciello, a minus 410 favorite. I don't think it's that... Divided, I think it's a little closer than that, but we'll see Yamasaki staying out there. 
Crowd buzzing again as two left hands land for Marciello. Misses the low kick, though. And there's a very quick takedown attempt by Marciello, but he doesn't get it. Tries up against the ropes. Looking for the trip. He's got it. Look at the pass. It's a scramble, though. Scrambles. Tries up against the ropes. Looking for a leg sweep now. As, wow, Marciello gets side control off a superb uh, dry. That's crazy. Is Calavante trying to move? That's not happening, though. Still keeping him there in side control. He's been getting with, uh, just using the speed so far. It's Christian Marciello so far. Not really doing a whole lot, but he's keeping him down there. Yamasaki's going to stand him back up. There's a 10 of left hand from Galavante. There's two left hands on the right. Galavante looking for the takedown. Not happening, though. Can't get him down. Looking for the trip. Looking to take down both legs is uh, Marciello. Or it's Calavante, rather. As uh, Calavante gets the takedown. And he's keeping them guessing. They're looking for some separation. Now looking for the scramble. Not enough, though. Gets side control for that. Punching down. Is Calavantes. There's a big knee strike. And though. Felt, Marciello felt it coming though. And is using the shift. And wait to break free. Now they scramble. Calavante comes out on top. Right back inside control we go. Another knee strike to the ribs. I mean that's a great round for both guys. But I would say Calavante has the slight advantage. I think he did a little bit more damage. Plus I think he... As far as controlled the majority of the rounds, very close. So could have went either way. You could give it to Marciello for the one extra takedown and the extra strikes and the pass on the ground. But that's a lot closer. I, I figured it'd be a little closer than what the judges thought. As yeah, Marciello can't get out of the step strikes and catches him with a low kick, though, to the front leg. Calavante keeps him darting slightly uh, out of range. They're looking for his chance to start grappling. There's a punch as the land, and that gives Calavante the opportunity he needs to grapple up with him. Push him against the ropes. Looking for the takedown. He's got it again. It's not pretty, but he's got him in a turtle position now. Looking for the knee strike, but uh, they stand back up, and Calavante looking for the takedown again, and Calavante does not get it, but he's got a hold of his leg. Push him against the ropes. Another takedown. Cristiano Marcello is in a lot of trouble here because he has lost. Oh, well, but Marcello looking for the arm here. That would have been huge if he was able to get the arm from the bottom. As Calavante pounds away, looking for it again, as uh, trying to slow things down. He doesn't want to get, I mean, Yamasaki and these stand-ups at the wrong time is pissing me off. But Marcelo doesn't find the mark on the right hook to end out the round. Some superb head movement from uh, Marcelo to avoid the strikes. And, uh, man, Calavante has, uh, I think he proved right there that he's... I think he, he's going in as a unanimous, unanimous decision win over Marciello going into this third. But if Marciello could catch him with an arm bar or catch him with a submission, uh, you know, you, I wouldn't say it's over for him. He, he can still finish this fight. As they, There's a counter for Marciello with a left jab and a leg kick that just narrowly misses to, uh, to connect there. It's like it looked like we were about to see a shot from Calavante, but Marciello was more aggressive, took the initiative, can't get a good jab. There's a nice straight right hand from Marciello. As uh, Calavante misses the big right hand, allowing Marciello to count the left kick to the ribs. Moving in closer now, looking to open up an attack as Marciello. Calavante looked like they were about to see a shot, but Marciello simply took the initiative. There's a left hand and a nice straight right hand. Marciello comes in on Calavante, looking to unleash some strikes. There's a left jab and a right hand for Marciello. Calavante looking to shoot. He's got the single leg. That is tough. And uh, Marciello looking for the arm for the bottom. Can't do it, though. Looking for it again. Still can't do it. He keeps on trying, though. It just takes one. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think the judges will give it to Calavante. They give it to Marcelo. You know, I don't hate that. Because, sure, did he land a lot of strikes? Did he land more takedowns? Yes, but the first round was close. And the second round was all Calavante. But the third round could have went either way, to be honest. With how he tried to go for at least finishes with the submission. I don't mind that. I really don't. I could see what the judges thought. As far as that goes. But Calavante, I think if you're in the Calavante camp, you're probably thinking he got robbed. Though, you know, if you look at the metrics there. But uh, this is definitely a, a note to the guys on this card. You do not want to leave that up to the judges <laughs> here in Brazil. You will get fucked. As uh, Marcelo gives a name check to everyone at CM System. All his responsible all of his friends, family, and supporters. As he uh, says a tough fight and gives a short respect to GZ Calavante. As Karina Dam and Chris Cyborg are our first women's fight I want to say our first women's fight in Brazil. So that's cool. Breaking head wave. Both Brazilian fighters. Uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu style from Karina Dam. And Muay Thai background for Cyborg. A little bigger. Uh, it's Gracie Fusion. Peresta. Both women, though, minus 110. Herb Dean's are free. Let's see if Cyborg can uh, run through her like a buzzsaw like I thought she would. I think she's going to fight around 165. I think that weight's going to be too much for her if she gets her in a clinch. 
We'll see, though. Both, uh, you know, fighting in front, of, in front of a home crowd. Dan backing away, showing the left hand. There's some, some strikes, uh, but doesn't land any of them. And Cyborg, again, moving closer. Dan with a tenor of left hand. The quick punch is a land. Another quick punch is a land. Dan grabs her with a clinch, trying to uh, suck her into a guard, uh, which it does not happen. Figured that was going to be the case there. Try to get into a Muay Thai clinch. Can't get it, though. Dan gets out of the grapple entirely. As a uh, Dan clearly respecting the striking of Chris Cyborg, which I do not blame her. Jab is wide, then hits her with a leg kick. Dan clinches now. Wanting to suck her into the guard. Not happening. I don't know why you want to clinch up with her, because you might get caught in the Muay Thai clinch. But so far, Karina Dam has done a great job of slipping out of him. Dam looking for the takedown. Does not happen. As Shao trying to push her up against the ropes. Looking for the Muay Thai clinch. Not happening, though. And there's some landing three. Or one of the three punches. And then lands the right hand. And there's a gash underneath the eye of Karina Dam. As Cyborg throws some strikes and a kick to the body. Dam defends them all well. Dam, again, defending him well. And uh, now she's got her in a clinch. Look at the sucker under a guard. Not happening. Yep, can't do it again, though. I mean, this is... A, now, Dan looking for the Muay Thai clinch. That's not happening. They just keep on fighting for this Muay Thai clinch. And there's a jab, but leaves her exposed with a head kick attempt. And Dan kept capitalizing on it and catching it. Looking for the takedown. But, I mean, Chris Cyborg is so fucking tough. This has been a really great fight so far in the first... They are uh, quite, I mean, they are just at a stalemate with these two as far as skill-wise. And it's been pretty impressive. Cyborg looking for a trip to maybe try something new. That's not happening. I mean, oh, and then we're going to check on the cut. And not too much of a problem. So they're going to restart in the center with about two minutes left. Cyborg starting to feel it. But she connects uh, with a nice straight right hand that lands hard after missing with a jab. There's a nice jab and a right cross. Oh my god, there's a head kick. And she rocks it with that one. Looking for the Muay Thai clinch. She's got it. Went for the knee strike, but Dan blocks and now's out of it. Really thought she should have kept on striking there. And now look at the obviously look at the strike here. Jab lands. Dodges the leg kick this Dan. Yeah, I mean Cyborg's a fucking savage. Karina Dan though doing a very good job of surviving at least. She made it out of the first, and that's a tough round to, to survive. You know, ten minutes of an onslaught from Chris Cyborg. Down Karina Dan looking for the takedown. Not happening though. Uh, but she's going to drive her against the ropes, looking for the Muay Thai clinch. And, uh, you know, she it's funny that they're playing into each other's strengths, I think, really, more than anything. Maybe not Karina Dam so much. She's trying to suck her into a guard, which is a terrible idea. But I don't think the double leg or single leg was going to work either way either. But it's just, it has not been working out either way. Jab hits home from Cyborg and hits her with a scythering kick to the legs. Dam closing the distance, looking for a clinch. Cyborg gets dominant control, looking for the trip. Not happening, though. Again, I mean, both women are just stopping these takedowns, and we're keeping it standing the whole way, and now Dam slips out of the, the, the Muay Thai clinch. Sarbrook's starting to gas herself out, though. Dam looking for the takedown, still not happening. Trying to drive her up against the ropes. She's got her. Oh, she's got her in the Muay Thai clinch. Looking for the knee strike. Doesn't have much power behind it, though. Misses the knee strike there, and now Cyborg blocks and gets out of the Muay Thai clinch. Let's see what Cyborg can do. There's a nice jab and a leg kicked in out the round. Oh, that's an interesting round to grade there, because not a whole lot happening, because they just kept on blocking each other's shit. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I might give that to Green to Dam, to be honest. That's that's a tough one, though, as far as, uh, now Cyborg, jab at a beat of a straight right. Either way, Cyborg's winning this fight, going into this final round. Jab is, uh, jab lands from Cyborg, rather, but misses the low kick, and now Dam shoots in. Doesn't happen, though. Almost stops it. Uh, but, uh, Dam stills all of it, keeps up against the rope. Cyborg's really tired now. Trying to get her in the Muay Thai clinch, but loses control, and now they circle out. Damn, look at the takedown, and <laughs> that gets stopped again. But uh, she's got her. Uh, maybe for a trip here? Yeah, she's got it. Look at the pass. Get side control. There's a scramble. Oh, damn, got it. she's got her back. Oh, no. Oh, there's a body triangle. Wow. What a win for Karina Dam. What a fight, though. Man, that was crazy. As uh, Karina Dam is a problem for sure. Twelve and two now, five and two is Cyborg. That was a that was a very tough fight though. That was t I mean Cyborg had it. She just uh, when she was down there gave up her back and that was all she wrote. As uh, she gives a name check to my press her very response office. Then all of her friends, family, and supporters looking at the replay of the finish. Karina Dam says it was a part of her game plans and she was waiting for the right opportunity to apply it. Yeah, I had to get her down to the ground. Our lightweight contest. 
Jose Aldo, the undefeated Jose Aldo, taking on Juan de Braga, and which is crazy that he's eleventh. Uh, or no, he's ninth, I think. No, he is. Yeah, he's ninth in uh, in our division, the eleventh welterweight in the world. And Jose Aldo is a minus three sixty favorite. <laughs> boy, oh boy, Yamasaki out there again. Plenty of vocal support for both guys. A lot of family and friends here. But this is going to be nuts. And there's a jab and a head kick. My God. Fails to find him. Fails to find him. His jab. But lands the big right hand. Aldo looking for a knockout. There's a powerful leg kick after the nice jab. Juan de Braga is booked. <laughs> is what this, what's happening here? As a as Aldo fails to land any strikes with the combination with an attempted head kick. And uh, now jab hits home from Aldo. Lands the right hand. As uh, Juan de Braga is clearly respecting Jose Aldo's skills. I mean, he is getting fucked up as we speak from these uh, strikes. And uh, he's got a lot to, to hand. Oh, my God. There's a jab and a crunching the right, uh, leg kick there. Braga moving in and out of range. Trying everything he can to try to get Aldo off his game. But I don't think it's going to happen. He's going to keep on getting hit with strikes here. As uh, Braga looks like, again, looking for a grappling exchange. That's not happening, though. But he misses the big right, so maybe this is his chance right here. But I don't know. Here comes Aldo with a flurry of five punches. All of them land in a nice straight right hand that lands hard. God damn, as there's a jab at our nice right hand. Braga's, again, trying to tempt him in a strike, and he's just going to keep on. He's a punching bag out here. There's a crunching leg kick. There's a crunching right hook. Another leg kick. Oh, my. Another hard leg kick. Just throwing the towel. Baraga's corner, please, because he's going to get... Oh, you know, there's a crunching straight right to the jaw, and he knocks him down. Looking to finish him with soccer kicks and, and uh, punches, but that's not happening. All those... Uh, yeah, yeah, he stomps and kicks away at the stun Baraga. He can't put him away, though. There's a kick to the knee. That uh, gets pulled down to the guard. Oh, my God, a Baraga... Oh, my God. If Baraga was going to possum him and, and get him into an arm bar from the bottom, that would have been crazy. Looking for it again, though. Aldo blocks it. This is... Oh, my God. Uh, looking for it again. Aldo blocks it again. Thank God, my mom. Sorry, he's going to stand him up. As a... Uh, as the matchmaker, I am... Uh, I'm very excited he stood him back up. But uh, as a fan of this fight, I kind of wished he would have kept him down. Sparago's barely able to walk down after all these leg kicks. He's still moving in and out of range. Here comes a right cross now. Check it out with the jab that lands the right hand. As, uh, yeah, Braga, I don't know how he's able to survive so far. He's barely able to walk now. Thanks to all these leg kicks. He can't get out the step strikes. Lands the big right hand. A minute left. Fails to find those jab. Then lands the right hand. Can't get, connect the step strikes. Then there's another straight right hand. There's a jab, but Braga's able to avoid the body kick to end out the round. Ice that fucking leg. Limping around some more. Nice jab and a right cross. As Aldo wins again. Oh my. Did he break his own hand? You gotta be kidding me. Baraga might be the luckiest man on this planet if he broke his hand. Can't connect with the jab and spinning kick to the body, though. We'll just fuck him up with some kicks. There's another destructive leg kick. Oh my god. The leg kicks. He doesn't even need his hand. He can just leg kick him to death. Unreal. Man, he's such a. That lightweight division's so crazy. Aldo, thanks ever connected to Gutsman Shudo for having a bear for the fight and his sponsors and uh, his sponsors supporting him financially. I would love to see him take on a top guy now, top five guy for sure. I mean that division's crazy, but like I, I need to see it. He needs to fight somebody tougher uh, for sure. But the Komei now, Leopoldo Cerro taking on Marl Soli off in the private middleweight division. Will the Russian take on the Brazilian? Will he stop the uh, the constant fucking? Uh, Brazilian versus Brazilian battles, but we have our two, you know, our come in main is Brazilian versus uh, Russia, as far as guys go, but Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy, and Leopardo Serra, who's been a savage so far, Pride FC, taking on kickboxing, Russell Leofu, we haven't really got to see a whole lot of, uh, we'll see what happens, though, in this co main, Herb Dean's referee, ringside judges, loud ovation from uh, uh, the crowd here for Leopardo Serra, take down Tim Serra right out of the gate, that is his game plan, and he's gonna keep him right there, I'm assuming. For the meantime, yeah, some right, but yeah, and then Harbin's gonna stand him up. That's nice of him. Only took about three minutes, and there's a head kick, though, from Omar Solioff. And there's a, there's a left jab, and can't get with a head kick, though. That'd have been crazy, as uh, now we, big right hand, or the, yeah, the jab lands with a big right head kick is wide of the mark. Uh, Solioff, lighten him up. Holy shit. 
So they have moving in closer again. There's two quick punches. Doesn't hit him. Oh, but he hits him with a high right head kick. Albacerio oh, just keeps on eating. He strikes. He gets a single leg. Man, this is crazy. Look at our leg lock. Vasilev stops it. There's a slicing elbow but misses. Look for a leg lock again. That gets stopped. Look at the pass. He does so. Keeps him guessing. Trying to get out of the half guard. It's a scramble. It's only shit. Solov leaves his leg in as Sarah's trying to grab it. Oh, he pushes him down. Now he's in a turtle position. That was a huge uh, tactical mistake, though, for Saro. Solov might finish him right here. This is crazy. Holy shit. Tries to kick him to the body now as uh, Sarah scoots uh, backwards. And they're, they're standing up now. Solyov with a crunching right hook. I cannot believe he has not even rocked him with some of these strikes. What a round. Uh, I mean, this is crazy. So, Saro, obviously, his game plan's working out. But, I mean, Amar Solyov, he's landed a lot of big-time shots. Looks like he's only landed, actually, like, out of powerful strikes, about five of them. But it's just crazy. That was a hell of a round. Hell of a round. We'd love to see more of this. Let's see what happens in the second. As we look like we see a shot from Saro, but Solyov... Comes in, and here's a flurry. Four quick punches. Two of them land, and then hits the high right head kick. And they, you know, Styles make fights, and we're seeing it here. There's a left jab, but Sarah dodges the big right head kick that follows up. There's a takedown attempt, and Solov gets him down. Gets taken down by a single leg, trying to pass. He does so, and it's only in half guard. Sarah pounds away uh, with rights, but it feels like anything significant. Some more punches now. Trying to get a half guard in the better position. He does so, but it's a scramble. And uh, Solov drives up against the ropes, looking for a sweep, and it's a nice inside leg trip. So yeah, that was Leopoldo Sarah's round for sure. Definitely shut him down as far as he was able to land a couple of strikes, but yeah, I mean, Leopoldo Sarah, I mean, he's kind of playing into his game plan as Omar Solov, but if he is able to rock him, uh, that would definitely change things. I just don't see it happen. Solov lands a left hand. Now he's starting to slow down. Sarah looking to tempt him in the strike. There's a left hand and a big right hand. Connects with a nice jab and a right head kick. I cannot believe he's landing these strikes. He's not even doing anything. Can't connect the step strikes. There's a right cross. There's a left hand and a right hand from Soleoff. Beautiful right head kick now. And he rocks him. He finally does there in the third. And there's a fucking uppercut that knocks him out. Almost Soleoff says, fuck you, Brazil. What a fight, though. That was awesome. Yeah, that was great. Huge upset in the co-main. Will we see another R Ruski get a win here in our main event now? Oh, that, what a fucking fight, though. And Marcel F wants to fight Ron Faircloth next. That, that, I mean, honestly, the part of Sarah, here we are. We were feeding him to the, to the Lions in a Marcel F. Absolutely stunning performance for him. Really showed off his kickboxing in a big, big way. I think if he could beat Leopardo Sarah, I think that a Ron Faircloth fight would be a lot of fun, to be honest. Because, Fair, you know, Faircloth and Leopardo Sarah kind of have the same style, uh, stylistically speaking. And I, I think this would be a great fight for both guys. I'd love to see that. Yeah, that'd be great. And as our main event, Sergey Kuritnov taking on Big Nog. 24-4, and 20-2. Jujutsu boxing background, Sambo boxing background, Team of Vistian, and a fight card, or fight camp, rather, that was supposed to be deleted, but we can't delete fight camps, uh, so we just renamed it one and made it the shittiest fight camp that you can, and of course, the Noguera brothers are a part of it, just hilarious, but, uh, we saw one Russian win tonight against the Brazilian, well, we see another one here, he is the favorite going into this one, but, I, you know, Big Nog's a savage, but that would suck, though, having to lose to both Crow Cop and Sergey back-to-back, I'm sure we'll give him kind of a nice fight at the Shockwave card, if that's the case, he'll probably fight somebody that's, like, outside the top five. But we'll see. We shall see her being's referee, ringside judges. Nogueira, finding him in front of the home crowd, and that gets a big cheer from his entrance. So Nogueira moves in on Sergey, preparing the throw. As uh, Sergey looking for the takedown, but uh, Nogueira takes the initiative, fails to find home his jab, and hits a straight right. Jab is wide, and it scores the right round, that's kick to the ribs. They look at the body shot there. Gets a hold of him, though, without taking too much damage. As Sergey looking to push him against the ropes, looking for the trip, not happening. Look at those, suck him into the guard, and there's a violent slam. That's not a great idea. Yo, Sergey does not want to go down there with him. Stand on back up. Both fighters seem wary, but they come together and strike. As he misses the right roundhouse kick to the body, and then misses with the right hand. Does Sergey. As uh, he gets suckered into the feet, he's left exposed. Noguera slipping past the right hook and counters to the uh, right hand of the body. That's a little too short, but he hits the jab, though. 
Nogara moves in closer, looking to open up an attack. Sergey appeared to be going, trying to get in close. That's not happening, though. Jab is wide and scores the right roundhouse kick to the ribs. Two left hands from Nogara, but a big right hand is wide of the mark as it both fires step in and strike. Sergey with a left cross. Misses the left jab, but hits a crunching kick to the thigh. Nice thigh strike there as Sergey tended left left hand, a jab. It lands from uh, Big Nog, but the big right hand falls up, misses. Sergey looking to grapple, but couldn't take the initiative. Nogara, I mean, he's throwing strikes. He's in control of the fight, but it, it's not really doing a whole lot. Sergey still hasn't really opened up yet, I feel like, as he misses all the right... And misses the right hook and gets kind of the right cross. Does uh, Nogara halfway point in the first. Sergey with a left hand on a right hook. Nogara's off target with a left jab and lands the right hook. Sergey trying to tempt Nogara into a reckless strike. Left jab, but Sergey avoids the big right punch. As now Sergey's able to get a hold of him. Looks like, oh no, nope. as a jab is wide and he scores the right cross to Nogara. There's a counter jab. Nogara fails to find him jab and hits him with a straight right. Toe to with strikes now. Nogara confidently comes in closer. Can't connect with a jab. Catches uh, Sergey with the right hook to the body, though. Nogara's starting to slow down. That's not a good sign. We got a whole lot of fighting left. Looks like everybody's see a shot from Sergey, but Nogara simply took the initiative. A 1 2. Doesn't really land it, though. Jab lands from Nogara, but misses the body kick. And there's a great power and speed there from Sergey with this takedown. He's going to keep him down there, though. He's, uh, you know, I feel like that's a, a smart... Act. Well, maybe not. <laughs> As, uh, Sergey gets out of it, though. Looking for it again is Big Nog. He does survive. Uh, that's an interesting round. You know, as far as, uh, not a whole lot happening. Sergey, I think, did a, a little too much, you know, as far as for Big Nog. Well, I mean, that's an interesting one. I, if I was Sergey, though, I would not leave it up to the judges here in Brazil. We'll see what happens. Big Nog... Confidently moves in closer, looking to throw some strikes. Throws a punch, but Sergey was equal to it. Sergey comes in. Two kind of left hands, though, from Nogara. Two punches, but Sergey doesn't hit either of them. Nogara looking to short the range. There's a left jab, but evades the big right to Sergey. Uh, jab is wide, then lands the big right hand to the body. Can't connect with the jab, then scores the right hand. It's a nice right hand, and also gets a hold of him. There's a knee strike to the, uh, the side of the stomach now. Out rustles him, and Sergey takes control of it. Looking to drag him down to the guard, which, again, counters a violent slam. As there's a, is hit with it. Some now sharp kicks to the calf now. Sergey gonna let him stand. Smart move. Hits the left hand, but Sergey evades the uh, big right punch. There's a quick punch though. Minute left. As Sergey aggressively comes forward, willing to get hit. It gets close enough to grapple. Left hand. As Sergey evades the big right, and then he gets a hold of him. And he's now trying to muscle against ropes. He does so. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is. I think Big Nog's in trouble. I think, going into this final round. We'll see, though. We'll see what the judges think. If they would have gave him that first, some small strikes and, and a right head kick, but Sergey defends all of them. Lands a left jab and finds another way there on the big right as Nogara in the deeper reaches of the gas tank. A jab lands from Sergey, uh, from uh, Nogara, rather, but Sergey evades the big right. There's a quick one, too. Doesn't land either blow. Connects with a jab, but Sergey can't connect with the strike. Sergey is able to clinch with him now. Got him against the ropes. Twist him down into side control, and uh, I think that's all she wrote for Big Knock, who just got, he's blown up at this point. He's going to get stuck there, some big right hands, and I, I think that's a dominant performance from Sergey Kuretnov, if I'm going to be honest, there in the second and the third. Oh, no. Wow. A majority draw. That's unreal. Man. Well, looks like we're going to have the fourth fight <laughs> between these two. Unreal. The hometown advantage for Big Nog. He gets saved. It, you know, that sucks, too, because that, that was a hell of a card after, really, the Marcelo Calavante fight. Because these, like, those last three fights there with Dam and Cyborg, Aldo and Barag and uh, Saro and Solioff, all three of those fights were really, really good. Even the uh, Cristiano Marcelo. Uh, Jay-Z Calavante fight. Well, yeah, that was a good fight for sure, but it just sucks we get that. That's a majority draw as well. It should have been a Sergey win all the way. I, I can't believe it. Fucking Brazil, man. The amount of times that... Uh, it's so funny too. Big Nog, man. You know, he... He's been bailed out a couple of times against Russian fighters in, in Brazil. Of course, the first time. Fedor. He got, I mean, Fedor beat him. I, I still think that. And during uh, 
Fedor's undefeated streak, and he got robbed. And, of course, we have the rematch in, in Japan, which uh, Big Nog did win, uh, rightfully so. You know, finished him with an arm bar. But to have the uh, the fourth fight, it, I mean, it's got to happen in Japan. Maybe it should happen in Russia. Maybe we should have a, a uh, fight in Russia. I think that's what we need to do, if we're, if we're going to be honest. We should have a Russian card. Hell yeah. Uh, it's $7 million, though. Hell of a night for us here. Uh, that was a nice night for Pride FC. As uh, That will do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time. Take care, everybody.